Hi there, it's Rob again. Just a quick tutorial on an introduction to controlling moving lights with CamSys MagicQ with particular reference to uh, the setup we have in the University Theatre. In previous tutorials we've um, looked at create, uh, creating a, a show and setting dimmer levels and creating a queue and also editing that queue and setting things like times. Today I just want to run through quickly uh, the differences between uh, the simplistic uh, version of calling up dimmer channels to particular levels um, and what happens a bit more in a more complex manner when you're um, controlling moving lights. So I've got a UT show file loaded up here at the moment. If I go into the patch, uh, we can see down here there's uh, 120 dimmers. We've got some spots and some washes and various things like that. Ordinarily with the plotting view, you have four tiled windows on the main touchscreen. If you've done this a lot, you'll know that the first one up here, which is the groups one, is where you select your groups. So you might do your whole all dimmer at um, 100 there, or you can do dimmer at full, or you can just type in at 30% and it sets the dimmers to 30%. That obviously is the group window and it's, it's minimised to its smallest size on the top left hand side. Interestingly enough, on the, on the actual desk itself, if you hold down the group button for long enough, uh, it will maximise. So if you have a lot of groups, um, you can hold down the uh, group button until it opens to maximum, hit your slot and then let go of it again. And that works with the same with all the other windows as well. The first thing to notice is that when you are, for instance, have an active window, it might be a window that's here or it might be, for instance, your Q stack window on another, on another screen. Whatever the active window is relates to what these top soft buttons are. So if you can't see what you're expecting to see with the soft buttons, it's probably because you have a different active window um, open to the one you're currently working on. So at the moment, I'm in active window um, is my group one, which means I have things like dimmer at full and locate, which is particularly useful for moving lights. So if I'm not in that window, I don't get it. So you're there looking around for locate and you can't find it. If you do what the workflow normally would be, is if you wanted to locate all your spots, which would be to open up all the colour, open up the dimmer, turn the strobe off and point them straight at the floor, you'd hit all spot, locate, and what that's done is it's set those to a locate position, pointing straight down in the uh, in the programmer, and then you go off and do other stuff. So that's don't forget if you can't see what you want to see in the top soft buttons are on the above the touch screen um, or any of the stuff around the edge, it's because your the active window is not the correct one. Now to create the active window to set it, you can either hit the particular window button. So I can make my color window active by hitting the color button. But what people tend to do is they tend to hit uh, an empty slot. Um, if there is an empty slot on the screen, or you can also touch the chrome bar at the top, which is harder on the touch screen. So if I want to activate my colour window, I can hit an empty slot, and then all of a sudden everything turns turns colour for me. So if I say, for instance, I'm going to hit all my all wash, I'm going to locate them, I'm going to make my colour window active so that I can adjust the CMY. Um, so I need to hit an empty slot, and then that gives me control over the CMY. So I can then turn the wheels up on here on the left hand side um, to change the colour. I can set the colour wheel and all that kind of thing. What I can also do is I can set it like that or I can go into colour mix mode and I can start off by selecting some of my colour in the rainbow. Now there's a number of different um, settings in the colour mix mode. If I maximise this screen um, you can change the colour type. So this is kind of a generic set of colours, forest green, dark green, all that sort of thing. You change the colour type again and it goes to what the uh, MagicQ sees as being lead, rough approximations of Lee colours. Um, or you can hit it again and it will give you Roscoe colours as well. So, And there's also one here with a larger rainbow. So you go back to the original, um, original settings, you can choose your uh, actual colour here on the rainbow. So that's how you see those screens. I go back to my plotting view again. See, when I've got the window active, I've, these are actually my colour palettes. Um, there's some information on palettes in other tutorials. Uh, but if I want to change the, the palettes here, I need to change it from to colour mix and back to colour attributes again. So that's how I get my colours up. And in a future tutorial, uh, I show you how to create palettes um, and groups and stuff for these various windows. But today we're just looking at the interface.
If you want to move your moving lights, you need to obviously have your position window activated because then you can see can, you can see the controls for the position. So if I got my still got my uh, washes selected, obviously you need to have your washes selected. I can hit that, and then I'll get I'll get my pan and tilt control down here on the X and Y wheels, which are the two larger horizontal wheels on the desk. But on here, they're just shown next to the screen. I can record a palette or choose another palette. Um, if you want to go back to locate again, obviously don't forget you need to hit the group window again so that you then get locate. Although there is also a locate button actually on the hard hard buttons actually on the desk, which is over here. I tend to work right around the touch screen and don't worry too much about the hard buttons a lot of the time. Finally, what we could do is we can look at um, the beam window. Now, the beam is quite a complicated window. Um, I can select all my spots. Now, I can see there's a number of um, gobos here which aren't marked up on this uh, particular show file. But on some show files, it will show you the gobo icon of the one, hopefully, the one you've got. It's worth knowing that the gobo icons here and also the color icons are based on information that CAMS has had about the fixture when they created the personality for the uh, fixture itself. That doesn't take into account any changes the manufacturers have made or the fact that you might have moved the colours or the gobos in the fixture. So they're just set, you often find with a colour wheel, um, often they may these particular icons may not be correct. So if you select your spots and hit green, for example, and it doesn't look green on stage, that's because the file within the desk doesn't know that, that those fixtures don't have green in that position in the wheel. And again, with the gobos, they may or may not be correct. So don't worry if they're not. But obviously, if it's going to confuse you, then what you might want to do is to um, delete the uh, delete the palette and re-record it somewhere else. In the beam uh, attribute, there's quite a lot of different things, especially with a uh, spot with a lot of complex uh, controls. So obviously, we have on this page we're looking at at the moment in the beam window, we have the shutter and we have the focus and the prism and other stuff like that. But there's also some tabs up here which go through different pages. Now, there's not much on this fixture other than on page one, mostly, and then something on page two, which is the prism rotation attribute. But that's the um, that's the key. If you're particularly in beam, but um, if you're looking at a very complex fixture, the uh, fixture itself might have a, a set of pages uh, for the different attributes in beam. So you can either change it up there. You can also flick through with the beam button, which changes through the pages. But it's actually just as easy to go through here. So then you go back to that, you can set your strobe to a particular setting you want it to be set to, you can set your focus, and you can change your prism type. Now what you can do is then go to another page, set, set your attribute, and then go back to the first page again. So the beam attributes, particularly on a moving spot, are more complicated because there's more things. As well as using the wheel here, quite a good example of this is in the color um, window is that there's actually, you can actually bump through the uh, particular sort of what it perceives as being the set colors. So you can actually hit the button um, next to the window to bump through without sort of winding up and down like this between them. Now again, these particular icons here are not necessarily correct because it depends on when the fixture personality was updated and what, even if you've made changes or anyone's made changes to the colors in the fixture itself. So, but if you want to bump up on the software here, I can bump the, the top section of this little square and it will bump up, and then the bottom section will bump back down again. On the desk, there's only one button, which is next to the hard button, which is next to the screen. So if you don't press the little uh, parts of the window, you access backwards by um, holding down shift on the desk. There's a number of shift controls. There's one either side of the touchscreen, um, and there's one down here in the main buttons as well. Um, and then you, that's how you go backwards. So. So, just if you want to set up your state, you can choose your fixtures, you could locate them to clear them out and start again, uh, no colour, no uh, pointing straight down or straight up, um, and no gobos or anything else. You can put them into a position, ideally you put them into a position palette that you've already created, so you put them into a position, put them into a colour, put them into a beam, and then also you can change page to set the beam parameters that don't fit on the first page. So that's the interface then for controlling moving lights. It's kind of, you obviously have more attributes to set than you do with a simple dimmer channel, which you can just call up and set to a level. Um, what I would suggest you do is you learn how to create your palettes um, and your color and beam and position palettes so that when you do come to work with uh, your moving lights, you find that the workflow uh, is a lot quicker. You could also experiment with um, the different selection tools we have here in the sense that if you select a group, you can select up a whole fixture. Um, and if you select uh, 
uh, a single fixture such as uh, 204. I went 204 at at and it selected the, uh, the fixture 204. Um, you can select them by number but also if you select things in a group you can also hit next and previous and it will bump through the selections um, on your um, the ones that you've got in the group so that you can for instance you can select all of your fixtures you can put them to a position and then you can keep going next pan and tilt with that one next pan and tilt with that one next pan and tilt with that one so have a look at some of those selection tools I hope this has been useful and I'll see you soon